This is in-depth study of the Christ, the propitiation, the begotten Son, the Lord, the Judge, the Ruler, the Standard, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the One, the True Jesus Christ. Here on Understanding the Bible Radio On Screen Step Facebook Live YouTube Live Live On Screen Undeniable Facts of Scripture Understanding the Bible Radio Ron Saxton Right here Got a question for Mr. Jason Travis Smith Going to uh, Do a study for him Wants to know, told you, all you got to do is send me your, send me your question, your topic, whatever have you posted. I will get to it. When am I saved? Basically is the question that he asked me. Am I saved when I believe? Um, let me see if I can get the actual question <clears throat> so that I can answer it fully and correctly. No tithing, no seed sowing, no products sold here. God does not need your money. He needs you to be a living sacrifice for his spirit to dwell in. Crave his spirit, long for it. That's the bottom line. Without it, you are none of his. Uh, Let's see. He says, he asked a question. He says, um, don't you receive the Holy Spirit as soon as you are saved? Now, with with me, when you ask that, because of my understanding of being saved now, I would say exactly yes, because when you receive the Holy Spirit, that is when you are you are saved. Yes, you are in the one who is salvation. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to type up saved. OK, and we're going to go to some definition study to give you the the actual what the actual lexicons original languages say in regards to saved and i'm gonna think i'm gonna pull up my i'm thinking i don't know why romans is coming through well jesus even said it there no romans is not showing up is it no i don't think so let's see maybe it is well we're gonna we can go to jesus yeah romans is there yeah there it is thou shalt be saved the g49 Eight two. Let's go back up with where Jesus was talking. He says that you might be safe. Same Greek, same concordance number. That's the same Greek definition. So we just gonna open it up. Oh, let me go back and read it because somebody will say something like I did something. So let's see. Uh, this is John five thirty four. But I receive not testimony from man. He doesn't receive testimony from man. But the things I say that ye might be saved so we understand exactly what he's saying there i hope and here is our original word strong's g 4982 sozo 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 is the original word sozo that's the greek that's where we get our our english word saved from uh so let's see here it says the outline says to save, keep safe and sound to rescue from danger or destruction. Well, we know that uh, the big rapture questions comes up about who's going. Are we going before destruction or are we going after or in or in the middle of destruction or after destruction? Well, there you go. Here's your definition from the lexicon that ministers use to create their sermons with uh, one to save one from destruction here. Basically, the sub definition is one from injury or peril to save a suffering one from perishing. We don't want to perish. Right. We want to be saved. One suffering from disease. We, we don't want the coronavirus to make one. Well, if I do get the coronavirus, Father, Lord, God, save me, heal me through your son by his power to make one well, heal, restore to health. Right. Yeah. To preserve one who is in danger of destruction. All right. To save our to save or rescue which is what we want to save in the technical biblical sense. Okay. Now here's negatively sub definition. The sub sub definition of that is to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment 
to save from the evils which obst- obstruct the reception of the messi- messianic deliverance, which is what really is going to be deception. Okay, to save from the evils which up. So you you, you got to be saved from the deception that you're hearing about being saved. Okay, uh, and I would like to add here at that point that. Um, The deception we hear will say this prayer and then you say it and we believe you got saved. That's what they believe. OK, we're going to go into how it's done so you can see the process. OK, so you guys can see it clearly. Undeniable. All right. So listen to save, keep safe and sound from destruction. Let's see to make well suffering from disease, save one from perishing. All right. <clears throat> we got all scriptures there. Matthew, Mark, Luke. All right. Uh, others understand this as including spiritual healing. I, I, I agree. I do agree with that also. That's there. I fully agree. Okay. We got Luke, James, Matthew, Mark, John, and Acts. All right. To preserve one who is in danger of destruction to save. That's Matthew. All of them are right there on the screen. You could take a look at them. I'm not going to run into them. I don't want to drag it out. I only got no more than an hour. Want to get on here and get it going. And Helena's in the wings. Uh, let's see. Now, what else we got here? With the genitive of the place to bring safe forth from. Jude. Jude there. Okay. You got from the peril of this hour, which is John 12. All right. Let's see. What else we got in a technical biblical? Negatively, to deliver from the penalties Okay, of the messianic judgment, messianic, not mosaic, messianic, which is his his judgment, the Messiah, Joel two, Joel three, to save from the evils uh, which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliverance. Okay, that's Matthew one. And that's where the angel is telling Mary he will save his people. All right. Namely, from the punitive wrath of God at the judgment of the last day. That's Romans 5. Okay. Acts 2. James 5. Right there on the screen. You can always pause, rewind. It's totally up to you. Pause, rewind. Totally up to you. On the study. Take it back. Look at it again. Remember, this is you don't have to just not see it again. It's there for you to stop it and check it out and dissect it scrutinize what I'm saying positively to make one a partaker of the salvation by Christ. That's what we want, right? That's what we want. So we got Matthew 19, right? Okay. And Luke, Mark, we got the gospels. There we go. And John also there. Yep. Save since salvation begins in this life. This is when it starts. Hello. It doesn't start. Once you leave your body, it starts now. Okay, this is the definition from the Greek language translated into our English. This is a lexicon, Thayer's lexicon. Okay, this is what ministers use. This is what the Bible was originally or translated from into English. Okay, that's the bottom line there. You got to know that salvation begins in this life in deliverance from error and corrupt notions. See that deception I told you about? That's it. He's going to save you from deception. So all the videos, all the social media posts, all the all the photoshops that you believe and and look at now and 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 you and you repost or share it or you go with it, you flow with it. Okay. If they're deception, you're going to leave them. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm living it. That's why you don't see me sharing stuff on my page because I'm not with that. They're posting up deception. That's why I do. I don't mm -mm, No, I'm not posting nobody's uh, 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 ministries up on my faith. That's not telling the exact truth, period of Christ. This is the exact facts. He's the one. Look at this. Since salvation begins in this life in how does it begin in the deliverance from error and corrupt notions in moral purity And in pardon of sin, he's the one that forgives. He is the salvation. Okay, he is. Salvation is not you being in heaven. 
it's him in you. Christ the Salvation, that is a study on the YouTube channel. Check it out. In pardon of sin and in the blessed peace of a soul, look, it's reconciled to God. All of this, all of this, all right? But on the visible return of Christ from heaven, will he... Per- on the visible return of Christ from heaven, will he perfect it in the consummate blessings of this Greek term here? It's going to be consummated when he returns. We can understand why this Greek term is spoken of in some passages as a present possession. Present possession. Not later. Now. In others, as a good yet future, as blessings beginning or begun on earth it starts now you get it it starts now now we're gonna get we get into the process don't worry this is the inner workings this is the inner workings inside here it is matthew luke john romans corinthians first and second no just first first thessalonians second thessalonians second timothy titus they're all there on the screen pause it write them down look them up do some study Show if you're diligent in trying to find out to rightly divide the word of Christ truth. Okay, that's what just what truth is. It's him. Not the word of scripture. The word of truth. That is not scripture. Okay, they didn't they weren't studying scripture back then. You understand? They didn't have New Testament written to them and they were studying it. Rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. What he said. What is he saying? Because many people are taking what he said and they're twisting it. Like, you know, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my 10 commandments. No, it didn't say that. He said in the original language, if you love me, keep my instructions, my speech, what I'm saying to you, what I am directing you to do, what I'm. Then he begins to immediately begin to talk about receiving his spirit. Okay, that's what it does. Take a look at it. Study it out for yourself. Don't listen to what a man is saying. You're going to have to jump in and you're going to have to start studying on your own. If you get confused, then what you need to do is go to God and tell him, prove to me, prove this to me. Give me your spirit. Save me now. I need you to do it. All right. So let's see here. Let's keep going. Uh, Dative of the instrument. Let's see uh, this Greek term here. Eros of the time when they when they turned to Christ. Because the, 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 I'm going to show you why they're turning. I'm going to show you why. And it's not because somebody's telling them you need to do all the law so that you can be saved. That's not why. All right. All right. Matthew. Got Matthew there. Romans again. First Corinthians. First Timothy. James four. Mark. Luke. All right. First Corinthians. By a pregnant construction. Uh, it's been placed in you to seed the parable of the sower and the seed. If the seed is fell in good ground, it will bring forth food. Plus, that's going to take time. That's going to take time. It doesn't happen instantaneously. You're going to get seed and then just go out and, you know, bring forth fruit. It's just bam, it's there. When that fruit is made for others to eat of, the fruit from him, the fruit that the seed is in you, now the others are eating off that from what you say. You're, you're, when you speak his son, you're going to give them rivers of living water. That water is means nutriment for the soul. You're going to be speaking to their soul. Him. That's what you're speaking. Not what laws you kept. That doesn't work that way. You'll see that in a moment. To save and transport into. Ooh. Second, Timoth- Second Timothy. Before Maccabees, which is in the Apocrypha. All right. Many examples of this construction are given in. Passau, volume two. Not, I never read Passau. Don't know what that is. All right. So there we go. Universally. All right. All of these good scriptures here. And it's opposed to this Greek term, which is in 1 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians 2. You can check them out. They're opposed to that Greek term there. Okay. There you go. That's our lexicon screen print. So saved. So we got a, we got a definition there of saved. Okay. Saved. Now, let me go and jump in here straight to the process. Process is shown to the one who persecuted and was against Christ. 
and then found him or, or, or he found Paul or stopped him on the road to Damascus. And then the Hebrew, number one Hebrew, who did not turn and start saying do law again after he stopped him, he said, I'm going to make you my servant, my minister, and you will speak unto the Gentiles. And he spoke the mysteries that were not revealed to Hebrews. Okay. The mystery that was hidden away before a man was ever made. And in Ephesians, you can see that also. You have to study. You've got to study it. It's a secret hidden thing in God the Father. Okay. And by way of his son. So let's go back up a little bit. And right here, it's even revealing it. It's showing you in Ephesians 2 here. Yeah, let's see. Okay, he's giving out. Okay, here we go. You can read more of this. You can read and study this together. Look at the factors. Take your time and look at it. I only use King James. I do not use new versions of the English translation. I don't do that. I only use the King James. Or King James there. New versions are taking things out of it. Taking things out of the King James version away from it. Changing words, and that's not good. So it says here that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. The riches of his grace is not the way we say it. By God's grace, I, I got this money. By God's grace, I got that job. By God's grace, my wife came back. My grace, No, the influence, the grace, you're going to see it right now. For by the, for by the, for by grace are you saved through faith now you want to know about saved right you're not saved when you believe now when you receive holy spirit this begins spirit is given to you i'm going to hold on i'm going to show you the, i'm going to show you the proof of it just hold on i'm just going by some details now but i'm going to get you to give you the core okay i'm going to give you the core all of this comes from the core for by grace you are saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is nothing that you do. There is no law you can do. No Ten Commandments that you can do. No moral acts that you can do. Because that's of a man. What he's done. Oh, so now God has a report card? Oh, because you don't know, you no longer do this or do that. You know, I you you turned and done good. Hey, you've got a great you've got a you've got an A here. You've got a B. You've got a C on my report card. You got a D, a passing. Well, you got a passing grade. You got, a, well, you know, you're, yeah, you didn't get a failing grade. So you didn't get an F. So I'm going to let you come on in your save. No, no. And nowhere does it say that. Nowhere in the after Christ finishes his work, does it say that a man must earn salvation by doing moral acts or by doing the Ten Commandments. It doesn't say that. Anywhere. No one can show it to me. I've searched for it for many months. I could not find it. This clears it up. This clears it up right here. Now let me give you the reverse translation of all of this right here. Now it is a gift. The gift from God. It is not man's gift. Man's gift says, I'm going to give you this gift if you give me any gift at all. Of any amount. Okay. That's your famous preachers and teachers that, that that's doing that there. So let's go here. And let me let me show you my reverse translation document where I've taken the the uh, definitions and replaced them with the words there. Okay. In case you guys want to pause that, I'm just going to go through that a little slowly so you can see it. Pause it, rewind it to get it showing on screen. So on your screens. So you can see the actual definition from the lexicons placed in to a document all right here online. All right. Not hiding anything. There it is. OK, that's John. First John two. We're going to get to the Ephesians two. You are saved by grace, not just believing, believing and saying a prayer doesn't get it. Doing the Ten Commandments doesn't get it. OK. Doing laws doesn't keep keeping holy days. All right. Saved definitions. There you go. For here it is. For by the merciful kindness, this is how you're saved. By the merciful, uh, by the merciful kindness by which God the Father, that's him, 
exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, his begotten son inside of human flesh, keeps, strengthens and increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of Christian virtues. A Christian word there should be Christ. Okay, because it's not religion. Okay. You're saved by this action happening from the Father toward you. All right? And this is what he does. He string he first he keeps you. Look, he turns you. That's repentance. You're turning to him. That's what repentance is. Turning to him. Keeping you. Look, right there. And strengthens you and increases you in his son's faith. His knowledge, his affection. He kindles you to the exercise of his son's virtues. All right. Eros. I don't know why I put that in. Uh, virtues are ye eros saved. Uh, I do believe maybe that's what that word. I got to look back at that definition of the time when they turn to Christ through faith and not of yourselves. I missed a faith, didn't I? The faith there. The faith is something that Christ has that you are sanctified by. You are set apart from the world. You are set apart from religion. You're set apart from all of that other stuff. All of that. You're set apart from that by the faith that he has, which is shown in, I'm going to give it to you, Acts 20, Acts 26, verse 18. You are sanctified by Christ that is, uh, when he says, they will be sanctified by Christ that is, I mean, by faith that is in me. They will be sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay. Now he's now many people think that means they'll they are sanctified by faith that they have in me, that they have toward me, that they have. No, he's saying you'll be sanctified by the faith that I have, and I'm going to give it to you. That's what he's saying by faith that I have in me, and I give it to you. Faith comes from him. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for and things unseen. You can see money, cars, houses, uh, dreams fulfilled, imaginations fulfilled. You can see that in your head. But this faith is a substance that you cannot see. It's the it's it's the hope. It's the hope of him in you. That's basically what it is. Now, it's not of works. You are not saved by any works. Lest any man should boast. God will not share any glory with anyone about saving souls period none he won't do it so there's not of works okay there it is for we are his the father's workmanship created in his son christ jesus that's who we are for those that he has done this with for those that he has influenced and turned to his son and kept them in his son you don't stay in his son he keeps you in his son got it what you got alina I just want to just have some clarity here. Bring up, come uh, back up close, people, come back up close. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. That's it. Okay. Because so there are a lot of people that believe that as soon as they believe on the Christ, that they are saved that's right be, then and there. That's because they, they and, are. Yeah, that's because they're they're That's what they're taught. Mis, they're, they're mistaught about that. Right. Right. To see. But I looked it up. I just looked and it up. And I wanted you to. I just did showed you, it on did screen. Did you go through <laughs> Mark 16 and 16? I didn't, I didn't pull up to Mark 16 itself, but the definition said that we're saved from corrupt error and, and opinions. We're saved from that deception. Right. That's what, that's what, the yeah. sal- that's what salvation does. Right. But I'm talking about the, the question of are you saved once you believe? And no, I no. He said, to no, his, Mark his, 16 and 16. His 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 uh, question was um, his question was Are you saved? Uh, once you receive the Holy Spirit, are you saved? You know, does it happen right then and there? I said yes at the beginning. Yes, yes. at the very that, beginning that of the study. Salvation. Now, going back to the save definition, uh, G four nine eight two. For those that weren't here, um, it says. Uh, let's see here. Let me go down. Where was it? It's down here somewhere. Since salvation begins in this life, in deliverance from error and corrupt notions. See that? Deliverance from error and, cor- and corrupt notions. You see that? 
Oh, you can't see it. But that's what it says in the G4982. That's what it says. In moral purity, in pardon of sin, and in the blessed peace of a soul that is what? Reconciled to God. This is what we're seeing. We're reconciled by what? Grace through faith. That's how we are. That's how it is all coming from the one who gives it to us, which is his begotten son. That's why the father's bringing you to his son, because he placed it all in his son. And he's keeping you and strengthening you in his son. See, that's what I had to listen. You got to get that. You got to get that. This is this is the original definitions, people of scripture from the Greek lexicon, the Greek manuscripts. And, and you can't get around that. The English is not the original. No matter what English you're reading, it's not the original. OK, so th- this is this is it. We are his workmanship. Now, I'm going to go to Mark 16 in a moment because I'm, I'm about to wrap, about to, about to hit, hit the nail on the head. For we are his workmanship. This ain't hit it already. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See, because you're created in his son, the good works will begin to come out because of what's going on inside you. OK, not the other way around. Man makes it the other way around. OK. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them he before ordained this before the law before hebrews before adam and eve before noah before before that he had already done this within himself he had purposed this to be done in himself even if adam had ate the tree of life everyone born after another human if he had ate the tree of life first christ would be living in them They will be born with his spirit. Because the father hath ordained that we should walk in these work. We are his work to be his workmanship in his son. That's what the father has ordained. It would have it would have happened that way, but it didn't. But it happened this way. Either way, you can't beat the father, period. You can't beat him. All right. Now, we were uh, reconciled here. I think there's a uh, scripture down here that talks about us being reconciled. We were sometimes afar off, were made nigh by the blood, for he he is our peace. That's our peace. Our peace is not, you know, doing good works. Our peace is him. Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition, having abolished in his flesh. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself. See, this is not about you. It was about to make within myself peace. I mean, I'm sorry, one new man so making peace that he might reconcile. See that? That was in the definition. Both unto God, both of us, in one body, not two, three, four, five, six thousands of different uh, faiths, bodies. No, there's only one faith. There's only one. And it's the one that comes from him into your soul and, and, and the other souls and other souls and other souls. There's so many people walking around with his faith. You're going to find out who they are when he snatches them out of here. He will save them from the hour of temptation. That's what he said. Because we've held the word of his patience. Okay. That's what he says in Revelation. Okay. Now it's done by his, by the cross, having slain the entity thereby. That's where it was done at. Okay. So now. Once you receive his spirit. I'm going to do mine first and then we're going to talk about Helena's because mine is should be pretty, pretty straightforward. For God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. OK, that's what it says there. Now, now that I want you to know that John three sixteen, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not but have everlasting life. Now we also have the parable of the seed and the sower where it falls on uh, rocky ground, bad ground, rocky ground, whatever, stony, uh, whatever have you, good ground. You got three different types, I think, or four different types of ground. One of those types of ground, get it, they get the seed, they get it. They get the seed of him, hearing the word of the father, hearing the gospel, hearing that seed, getting his son. And then when life's, perils, temptations, whatever situations come to pass. When they come, they choke it out. 
and they no longer have it because they left off from it. They left it away. They left it away. It didn't take root in them. That's the thing. It has to take root. Now, Jesus tells a religious uh, uh, Pharisee of the Hebrew Pharisees of the Jewish of the covenant of you know the Hebrews or Mosaic or whatever he says this to them right there in the same chapter above this above John 3 16 he says verily this is how it's done verily verily except uh, uh, I'm sorry I say unto thee except a man be born of a water and of the spirit this water is nutriment from the soul, for the soul it is not physical water it's not water baptism I can prove that to you if you want. Just post it up. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. I'll show it to you on screen. Born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not dwell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit you see he you see what he's talking about there being born means you're now coming into a brand new that new creature he created that new man he created that he expounds on with paul in ephesians 2 how can it be that i could i could be born again i go back up into my mama i'm a grown man how can i do that it's of spirit so, yes, when you receive, when you immediately receive his spirit, you're saved. Also, I want to say this. Once you do receive his spirit, you will do and, and you will have the same traits in your speaking. That's where I'm going to just stick at on the speaking. I'm not going to talk about the spiritual gifts now because he gives all that. He gives the gifts. He gives all that. He gives the knowledge. He gives the faith. He gives all of that to you. You begin to speak him only. You don't speak nothing else. There's nothing else you speak. Don't believe it? Let's take a look. Let's see. Um, that would be Acts 2, where he shows this happening. This happens. They claim that they were drunk. The people outside that heard these people speaking the wonderful works of God. In other languages, uh, drunk. Where is Acts? Ah, I didn't say that. Uh, maybe it didn't say drunk. Maybe it's some other word because Blue Letter Bible is very concise with your search. Uh, filled. Let's say filled because they all were filled with the spirit in the upper room. There was 120, 120, 125 of them. There wasn't just 12 people up there in the upper room in Acts as the movies depict. There was many more. And um, Jesus had appeared to them and told them to be there. He appeared to 250 is what it says, but only 120, 125 made it. That's Acts 2. Acts 2, 2. And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come... They, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as fire, as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues, which is languages. That they all could understand. It wasn't a heavenly language or some, you know, third dimensional uh, uh, spirit dimension language. It was a language that they could understand. It was Russian, uh, Arabic, you know, just to give you an example. As the spirit did this, gave them utterance. The spirit did this. They are all up there speaking in each other's languages so loudly people outside heard. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men. Uh, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. People started to gather around and were confounded because why? That every man heard them speak in his own language. They were in a marketplace where all these different people spoke. They spoke all these different languages. 
were out bartering, buying and selling and doing. That's where they were. They were in that area. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They didn't know. They Hey, aren't they all Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own language, tongue, wherein were we were born? Then they got all these different people here. All the all. There you go. They all there. All right. They were all speaking in our language. They all speak. They, they mentioned them all. We do hear them speak in our languages. Look, the wonderful works of God. They were hearing the true gospel. And they were all amazed, were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. See, they're drunk. But Peter, the one who denied Jesus Christ, the Hebrew, 100% Hebrew, standing up with the 11 of them, he denied Christ three times, lifted up his voice and said unto them, "With look, at he got the boldness. Look at this. I'm about to talk, talk to the whole group of y'all. Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. They don't want to talk about that. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, should have said in flesh, in, in us, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, speak his son, which is what they just did in, in the different languages, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and, uh, and on my handmaidens I will pour out in these, in those days of my spirit, and they shall speak my son. That's what prophecy is, speaking Christ. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible, I'm sorry, notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Israelites. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge, foreknowledge of God. You have taken in by wicked hands, have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it for David speaketh concerning him. For I saw foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand and I should not be moved. Therefore, did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad more more over also my flesh shall rest in hope because I will not leave my soul in hell I'm sorry because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption that has been made known to me the ways of the life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day therefore being a prophet knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne He seeing therefore spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. He's letting them know what's going on. That is the moment that they were saved. That is it. That's the one. Mark 16, 16. For Helena. Go here. All right. Questions, comments. Let's see. Oh, got a roll call. Roll call. Amon, stop by. Good to see you. Uh, Wendelin. Jeff Burt. Hey, how you doing? Travis. Jason Travis. Good to see you. Rissa. And Jason says, sorry. I had to, okay, you had to run to the store. Okay, I understand. So as soon as you believe, 
then the Holy Spirit begins to work. No, sir. That's a negative. So you can lose it. No, sir. You cannot lose it. No. You are saved when you receive the Holy Spirit. You're born by spirit. You're not born by belief. Helena, you there? Are you there? Yes. I okay. didn't know if, if, if you're reading this. Are you, what are you reading? I was reading Acts 2. Now I'm reading, getting ready to go with uh, Mark breathing. Breathing. Mark 16. Breathing. Breathing. About to, I'm about to. Uh, you're breathing. Mark 16. 16. <laughs> he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. This is Jesus talking. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, new languages. That's been done by spirit. You don't cast out a devil unless it's done by spirit. No, I'm sorry. Yes, you do. You can speak. You can you can call on a, a, a Christ uh, uh, to cast out a demon because in Matthew 7, he said he said many of them said in your name, we cast out devils. Right in your interest. So you can do that. Now, speaking with a new language that you don't know about has only been shown and proven in Scripture that it's only done by receiving his spirit. We just looked at Acts 2. All right. They shall take up serpents. I'm not going to get snakes. I mean, it's just not feasible for me to do that. If I have to, I will. Paul took the, took a hit on a, from a serpent while he was speaking the gospel. Didn't even know the serpent was there, probably. And bit him but he nothing happened to him and they were all amazed and astonished okay and if they dr drink any deadly that any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover okay okay now this is so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven mm -hmm. and god said on the right hand this is just before we just read about the acts too good deal so go ahead Helena, what you got yeah, I just I just brought it up because uh, you know Romans ten out of ten. You know you talk that all your life about salvation. All you got to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that He is Lord. You know and you're and you're saved. Yeah. But you never talk about the inward part that you went through. Right. You went through all the spiritual inward part that is missed when you're yeah. in when you brought up in the church that's right that's what they and do. so that's why i brought up the the, the uh, mark sixteen sixteen because if you're just reading it and and you're just looking at it and it's saying oh okay all i gotta do is just believe oh i believe it oh i'm saying it's there's no you know once there's no right. it working. then you're going it's, off it's not yeah it's not by you right it's by him i believed i was saved i'm gonna tell you uh this is for jason i believed i was saved for decades I'm telling you, I was uh, from a young adult, mm -hmm. uh, probably a young teen, believed I was saved in God and, and all that, you know, f chill bumps, you know, tears in church, blah, 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 all the different stuff. Got baptized at age 13 in the water. Now, the baptism is his baptism, mm -hmm. Christ's baptism, which baptizes you with the spirit. He's the only one. He says that in John 14. I will ask the Father if He send you another Comforter, which is really my me. My, I'm a spirit. He's the begotten Son in human flesh. So that's really what He's talking about with baptism. He's not talking about water baptism. Everybody that's been baptized in is saved. Now everybody's bad. Babies are baptized in the, in Catholic churches. All right, when they're born, they have baptism for people that are Catholic. So that means everybody's baptized. No, that means everybody's saved. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that when you got to be baptized with his spirit in order to be saved. When you receive his spirit, it's it begins right then and there. You're born new again. You believed before that believing human believing is a precursor. OK, we're believing without doubt. That's a knowing. I know this to be so. Well, you just believe it, Ron. Well, I, I don't doubt it. I know it's true. You see, a, a child believes that a, 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 a demon, a boogeyman is trying to get them when they have a nightmare in the room. Right. They believe it. But, you know, different. Now, it's, of course, there could be demons messing with the child. It's possible. It definitely is possible. But when you get that child to make them understand, there's nothing under your bed. Turn on the light. Look at that. Get the flashlight. Get down here and look. Anything under there? No, it was there. It's not there now. It's in the closet. You put them in the closet. 
They having a conniption. Calm down. Anything in there? Did you get killed yet? Did they get you? No. What? It, well, there's nothing in there, right? Right. There's nothing there. The child believes that. You can watch movies or videos where everybody's watching the end time uh, Mark of the Beast videos with the Corona and Bill Gates and all that kind of stuff. Now watch the breathing, and um, they they <laughs> they they're watching that I stuff tried. and they start they start to believe it. They start believing it. Then they start posting it on everywhere. I was say, you can believe in anything. You can believe any it's, kind of I stuff. Think the fact, definition say I that. believed I left my keys over there on the table, but they're not there now. I believed I left them there. I'm really like, I know that they're, that I left them right here. You're the only one in the house, but you can't find them. The devil is a lie. The devil is messing with now. The devil ain't there moving your keys around. You just thought you left them there. The fact is they weren't there. Now you can believe this gospel, which is Christ. The true Jesus Christ has come needs to give you his spirit. Once you have it, then you are born. It will never be removed. And this is a stuff, stuff that a lot of religious people won't tell you. It's never removed. Either they don't know or they do know and don't want to tell you. It's never removed from you. I don't can't find it anywhere in scripture that the spirit was removed from someone. Jesus never said he said it shall be with you forever. Once you're in the father's hand, no man can take you out. Not even you because you're a man or mankind. OK, can take you out. No one. Only the father. But the father never reveals and shows anywhere in definitions that I've studied over these years. And and, and script, I've, I've dealt with one saved, always saved people all the time. Nowhere is it taken out. You do not receive his spirit by doing any works of law or any Hebrew uh, procedures. Nothing done like that way will get you his spirit. The only thing that will get you his spirit is belief in the true gospel that you are to receive his spirit. I need your spirit, Father, for you to work in me and create in me. Bring me to life in your son. Period. That's it. That's the only reason. Not for money, not for houses, cars, better life, more job opportunities, all that earthly stuff that they tie it to. Just because a man says, hey, say this prayer. We believed you got saved. That doesn't save you. If they were those people were getting saved, people when they say that prayer, bam, tongues start falling. I mean, out of everybody's mouth, people start saying all kind of, oh, just saying, oh, well, I can't say it. But when I when it happened to me, and now I thought I was saved for decades, but when this happened to me in two thousand and nine, from craving, longing, and praying to Him only for His Spirit, period, nothing else, no understanding. I didn't need pray for understanding. I didn't pray for none of that no more. I need your spirit. You must do it. Prayed it for three days without fail. I just prayed it for three days. Every private moment I got, I was with God praying for his spirit. You must give it to me. I know that you must give it to me. It's got to be done. You're the only one to do it. No one else can do it. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't listen to gospel music. I didn't call nobody on the phone. I turned the phone off. Didn't watch TV. None of that. Yes, I cooked dinner, ate, went to the bathroom, showered, and all that other stuff, and went to stay on, the, on my bed. I'm crying out for his spirit. Give me your son. I must have it. You did it for Paul, who was a Hebrew, 100% in the law, did all everything, all kind of procedures, everything, and was against your son, and you gave it to him. Give it to me, Father. I will speak your son. Three days later, 2.30 in the morning while I'm sleeping, slobbing while I'm asleep, drooling. He grabs my arm, pow, pulls me awake. I immediately spoke in another crystal clear, concise language. It wasn't babble. It wasn't that stuff that you see in videos and in churches. No, I had already done all that. I had already done all that deception and thought it was real. And it was not. That's my true confession. There you go. That's, I'm confessing it right now. I was wrong. That's why now I am speaking. How do you know you have it? You're not focused on the other garbage that, you, that you've been in and here now. Even today, it still goes on. Same deceptions. You cannot lose his spirit, period. The, one, the main deception is fear. That's the main thing. It breeds a factor of fear in you. You can lose his spirit if you break the law. The law was divorced in Jeremiah 3, 8. He tells it right there. I divorced them. The law came in the covenant with the Hebrews. That's where it came. Covenant married to God. 
married to God. This is he talks about the divorce. I divorced them. Everything that I told them to do is over. That's what a divorce is. When I marry you, woman, you we get to ma- I'm done with you. You keep committing adultery on me. You keep running away. You keep backsliding away from me. I'm, I'm done. It could, here's the bill of divorce. Here it is. I come home the next day. She's in the house cooking dinner, trying to be a wife now to me. She has insane because she just didn't see the court just approved the divorce. It's over. You're out of here. What are you doing in my house? This is the one thing that religious people cannot understand. And if, and if it had caught me back then when I was religious, I would have been doing the same thing they're doing, den- denying what it says. He did this with them. I put him away from the covenant. Now we're, we're done. Co- now I can, I can talk to the ex-wife. Hey, how you doing? How's everything going on? You know, it's really, I really, you know, uh, yeah, it's a tough thing that we're not together anymore. We ain't together no more. Okay, that covenant between us is over. Return to me. After he divorces them, guess what? They do not return to him. They keep going back. They keep going out to other. He keeps telling them, just come back to me. Listen to my voice. Hear my voice. Listen to me. They won't do it. Helene, if you got something else, let me talk. I mean, you got, if you're not, I can keep going because I got some more stuff I got to say. Okay. So, um, Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, so, so there is no, once you receive his spirit, what they don't want to tell you about it is, is what I just showed you in Ephesians two, you are his workmanship. And then you've got Philippians one. Also. Being confident of this very, let me go back for, for your fellowship in the gospel, not the law, not religion, not going to church, not listening to, to studies, not even listening to mine, not even listening to, uh, 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 YouTube videos, any other pastor, Bible studies, fellowships. No, the gospel, the good news from the father about his son being formed in you, of uh, uh, from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you. Who is that? Who is that he right there? That's the father. He will he will perform it until complete. That's what that perform means in the King James English. He will complete it until the day of his son. Do you got it? They, they don't want to tell you that. It's God working in you a work that is not of your natural mind. Your natural mind is God, make me great and wonderful. Give me a good job. Make me a good father. Make me a good this. Make me give me money. Let me get this is work. This in me. That's our natural minds doing that. What he's working in you is something that you will only know until until he reveals to you the work that he's doing, which is forming his son in you, that you would speak his son, revealing his son in you. This is what they don't want to tell you. Nope, you've got to stop this. You got to stop. You're going to naturally stop because you're not going to be interested in the stuff no more. It's God's working in you. Well, I can see there I need to work on him about forgiveness. He hasn't forgiven someone. I'm going to work on him with that. I'm going to talk to him about it. I'm going to work it in him. Next thing you you know, those who are born. Those who are born of, of him come, do not come closer. continue in sin. That's basically what you said. Come, come closer. They don't continue in it. When you have the spirit, you don't continue in sin. When you're born of him, right. you don't continue in it. Yes. yes. And for what and for what sins you do continue in, he's forgiving you because the father's in there working you, working in you. The, the Christ is the one that forgives sins. Well, and it's actually, a continual then, deal. I'm it's a continual deal. Say I don't agree with that. Why don't you agree with he's not the one that forgives sins? No, 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 not that. Oh, okay. And I was about says, to say. The, well, sins, the, the sins that you do commit. The, no, the you don't you do continue commit. in in the sin because Christ has Christ died for your sins. So you're not continuing in sins. It's not saying that you you're oh, not going to I got to what sin. you're saying. 
I got what you're saying. Yeah. yeah I got I what you're saying. Because he died clear. for it. He, he, you, yeah. yeah. He died for those sins. Now, what you're doing is when you get his spirit, like I did, and I'm sure the others that have truly received his spirit, they started to wonder, oh, I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be without sin. I'm just going to now I'm different. My voice sounds different and I'm going to walk holy and I'm going to speak. I'm going to levitate to work. I am not going to be able to take a bath because I will just be laying on top of the water. See, I'll be holy. See, you're going to you're going to be morally acting holy. You're going to be walking head with your head high. You're going to I am holy. You're taking your Bible everywhere with you. You everywhere you go. You know. <laughs> That's, see, that's what they portray to you that you should be. So when you're not like that, guess what? You feel bad. Oh, I sinned. Oh, I looked at that woman or I looked at that man or I watched that TV show. Right? Or I, or I did this or I did that or I thought this or I thought that because we got to get to the heart which is the seat of your affections and desires. Okay? And when your carnal mind is in there thinking of everything to go against God's knowledge because you've got a carnal mind and you're going to have it. It's not going to leave you. Like your whole mind is different. So you, Hey, I don't desire to do that no more. I just don't. I, I mean, not to say that, you know, some things you're not going to do. Some things are going to come up in your mind. Like somebody's going to make you mad and really tick you off and really offend you. And the father's going to say, offend, uh, 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 forgive them, forgive them. And you gonna and you in your head gonna be like, I don't deserve. He don't. They don't deserve forgiveness. The father gonna say, forgive them. Don't hold it. And he's gonna reveal to you about the forgiveness. He's gonna reveal to you in your brain, not a Bible study in your brain, because he did it to me. After I forgave the guy, then he explained it to me. You forgiving someone, and they know that they wronged you. That's going to affect them as well as you. They are going to be inside going, I can't believe this person forgave me for that. That man, that that touched my heart. That touched me. Yes, it does. It touches the other person, too, that you forgive. But anyway, well, when it pleased God who separated, this is Paul talking, the Hebrew, the one who did all the Hebrew procedures, the one who is it was the man. Okay who was against Christ and persecuted and killed Christians in the synagogue. Okay. He admits it in the Bible. He who God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by the influence upon my soul, turning me to Christ, keeping me in Christ and strengthening me in Christ. He revealed his son in me that I might preach that speaking his son among the heathen, the ones who don't have his son. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. It pleases God to do this in the human soul. This is salvation right here. This is salvation. The study will be there, man, for you whenever you want to see it over and over. It's totally totally up to you. He said, as soon as you believe, then the Holy Spirit will begin his work. No, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will begin his work. Believing is something you do when you hear the gospel. And, And God influences that for you to believe it. Now, once you believe it, you're waiting for his spirit. Go to him and crave it. You ain't got to just go to him and crave it. It should be a desire growing in you for his spirit. The spirit in you is the hope of glory. That's the one thing that these churches and these people aren't talking about. They're talking about everything you doing to get God's to get God's approval, praise and worship service. You know, uh, all these other procedures and stuff, doing the Sabbath day, doing all of this. and the, That covenant was divorced. What don't we understand there? You see what I'm saying? It's the dude, you're trying to come to him in a way that Christ is the Sabbath. And you begin to realize that that him working his son in, in you, so his, Christ is the Sabbath. That's exactly right. Christ is the feast. Yes, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Yes, he is. Christ is the knowledge. Yes, he is. He's the knowledge that wants to work in you. Yes, he's the faith. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, yes that's right. That's right. He is the commandment. Yes, he is. He's the commandment from the father to come down, complete the work that would, this would be made available to you and me before we were ever born to whom God would make known. What is the riches, the value, the treasure of the glory of this secret hidden thing that the father had 
among the Gentiles. That's why I'm not even concerned about being a Hebrew because it wasn't made and mentioned this, this unsearchable rich, this treasure to the Gentile, to the Hebrews. It wasn't made to them. It was made to those that were not Hebrew, which is Christ in you. This is the hope of the glory. This is the hope of the father's glory that his son be in, in the souls and he's going to get them too. He's going to get his number of souls. So I would, I would strongly urge you to crave his son period above nothing else. There's nothing else. This is what you need to do. Father, I will make the decision, make the commitment. I will speak your son. I will speak your son. And see, he would say, this is what they also stay away from. Christ tells the one who was judging everyone. Ah, let's see. Ah, I messed it up. Typing too fast, man. I'm too excited. Too excited. Let no man judge you. No man judge you. There it is. Colossians 2, right after he tells you what the hope of glory is. There it is. Let no man judge you. All right. Let no man therefore judge you in any meat, food, or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day, holy day, or in new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are, this is why, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. That's where you want to be in the body, the group of souls that he dwells in. Let no man beguile you for your, they're not talking about this. You see, they're not talking and telling you. Beguile, deceive you. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. You are saved when you receive his spirit. You come into birth, born of spirit. That's when you are saved. No man can remove it or take it out. No one can, not even you. Period. It's a done deal. Done deal. That's all right, Travis. Just, I mean, uh, uh, Jason, just come back, man, and uh, watch it when you can after you charge back up. Chauncey, the man, stop by. How you doing, man? Good to see you. I want to thank you guys for stopping by and joining me. Like it, share it. It's totally up to you. There's no money, tithing, sowing, no offering, no seed sowing, no partnering, no products sold here, period. This is totally free. You're seeing the true definitions of scripture right on screen, Greek and Hebrew, showing you the real deal that the true men, those, those true deceptive false ministers don't want to show you, don't want to tell you, you're listening to Understanding the Bible Radio. Please allow us to extend our deepest thanks, our humblest appreciation, our greatest gratitude for your fellowship here with us, sharing the letter of the gospel, the ancient definitions of scripture. This is understanding the Bible. <laughs>